Y'all, this is Deontay the Bronze Bummer Wilder, heavyweight champion of the world, and you're watching Real Fans Real Talk. Face facts, what up, what up? RealFansRealTalk.com Where Arthur Diamond trick young and intern Tom For the white and black fans Asian to Manhattan I get all my facts from my bro Mark the Stats Man If you're not tuned in, I recommend the CAT scan uh-huh. And if your brain checks out, then you deserve a backhand <laughs> Sports, gossip, all the hot topics hey, hey. RealFansRealTalk.com Got it, uh, they got uh, the hottest bloggers Did Jeremy Lin hurt? We'll log on to the site and you can hear it from them first I'm talking about the latest, yeah. I'm talking about the greatest yeah, yeah. Go check out the art even tell a neighbor, tell a Bobby sent ya. From spring to winter, tuning in should be the only thing on your agenda. Certified coach, son, you know what I'm about, son. Real fans, real talk. Dot com, I'm out for real fans. Real talk, real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk. Dot com, real fans, real talk. Dot com. Real fans, real talk. Real fans. Hello everyone, welcome to another live episode of Real Fans Real Talk. I'm Mark the Statman Skevich. We got a great show lined up for you tonight. The NFL playoffs are in full effect. Wild card weekend finished. We're heading on to the divisional round for some great matchups. A lot going on in the world of sports. Fresh off an interview in Hot 97 earlier today. Stay tuned for that, but I'm excited for Real Fans Real Talk. Let me introduce my co-host, the one and only Trip Young. What's going on, Trip? What's going on, man? It was a uh, great day. Shout out to the to the hip-hop gamer, man. Yep, definitely. Uh, he, he brought us out to Hot 97 earlier today. Myself, Statman, Ladybug, and uh, Cliff as well. Uh, we chopped it up with him for a little while, played some Super Smash Brothers on the uh, Nintendo Switch. Uh, definitely a dope experience. Always fun being in uh, Hot 97 in, in that building over there. A lot of history. Uh, in that building, especially, you know, Brooklyn, man, Big, J, all, you know, all the greats mm-hmm. and whatnot. So it was definitely a dope experience. But uh, we got a whole lot of sports to get into. The, the Eagles managed to yep. s- to escape. I know our director, Cliff, <laughs> is happy about that. Uh, it was, you know, pretty much down to the wire. And one of those crazy f- last-minute field goals where, you know, you either get the W or you get the heartbreak. And in this t- case for our Bears fans, and Bears players, it was a heartbreak, and uh, off the upright, and then off the crossbar, and then out. You can't get any closer to making it than that type of miss. Like, you know, uh, yeah. I, I'd rather have it just completely miss wide than have it where yeah. it hits the upright and the crossbar. And then, like, come on. And then they they said it was a block. After the fact, yeah, there was but a tip, on, or, you no, know, it was tipped I, also. But how did you hell that? When it's that, it, it really kind of, I mean, a block like you're talking about, you know, yeah, what that, that someone's was a, fingernail exactly. That seemed like a bailout to me, yeah. I, you know, I that, that was just, I don't, I don't know how to explain that one. I'm like, come on, man, you're gonna let these guys live a, another whole week. You mean I gotta hit Cliff's mouth for another week? Yeah, so. I ain't trying to deal with this right now, man. That was a travesty, but they will be going home this week. They ain't they not going to make it out of New Orleans with a W. I'll tell you that right now. They're going home. Drew Brees is going to make sure of that. Another NFC East rival, the Cowgirls, ended up getting a W also. Uh, so that leads to our fan mail question. Winston from Queens wrote in, which NFC East team do you guys think has a better chance of winning on the road? Uh, Can I say I mean, neither? Because I can't stand either one of those teams. It's definitely not going to be well, me the Eagles. That's for that's for sure. They they got the lead. But I guess if I had to pick one, I would say the Cowgirls, uh, just because uh, you know I don't know the Rams. At, at, so it's the end of the season weren't looking the same as they were the first. Yeah, half I mean the of Rams the lost to the Eagles. They you know yeah. they they haven't beaten any playoff teams other than the Chiefs. And that was, you know, that fifty-four to fifty, you yeah. know, type, type of shootout. Which is game. crazy because we, the way we were talking about the Rams' defense. Yeah, with all the all the players, they all the talent they got on defense, yeah. and just you know the defense isn't as crazy. I mean, it's the Chiefs' offense, so you figure the Chiefs' offense was going to put up numbers, but they put up crazy numbers against yeah. a defense that's supposed to be good. And that's so. not the first time they've allowed you know a large uh, point total from the opposing team. So if, if any team out of the two has a chance, I'm going to go uh, with the Cowgirls. But I just think that both of those teams 
uh, going home this uh, this weekend. I don't think the I really don't think the Eagles have a chance at all against the uh, against the Saints. I think Drew Brees is coming to show up and show out, and he's gonna he's he's going back to to, to his, uh, his second Super Bowl. Uh, and depending on who he plays, I think he's gonna get that W in the Super Bowl. Yeah, they're both heavy on the dogs. I think the 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 Saints are favored by eight. The Rams are favored by seven and a half. So. Yeah. It's they're both they're both. Uh, I I think the the cowgirls have a decent pass rush and Jared Goff kind of, you know, we saw against the Bears when the Bears was in his face he wasn't really doing too much. So I think the, the cowgirls have a somewhat of a chance of an upset. The Eagles are definitely going home. You could pretty much, uh, you know, write you know write that one up in the history books already because it's a wrap. Yeah, but they say it ain't over till the fat lady sings. But you know, yeah, I think I'm I pretty think sure it's over. Is. But let's ask uh, the one and only Eric Sanchez what he thinks about it. Y'all talking playoffs? <laughs> playoffs? <laughs> all right, Play all right, Eric, go ahead. We know, we know no, you're no, happy. No, no, the I mean, we, one. We're not gonna get off topic. We're gonna stay on topic. <laughs> um, I agree with uh, majority of the stuff you guys said. Um, Cowboys probably stand a better chance. I'm not really sold on the Rams, and yeah. then also the scenario you got still a young quarterback in Jared Goff. Um, he struggled last year in the playoffs against Atlanta. Uh, as a team, they made a lot of mistakes, fumbles, mm -hmm. just didn't play sharp. So I could see them struggling a little bit. Uh, the Eagles, I don't know how they win that game in New Orleans. I don't. Yeah. I still don't know how they beat the Bears, honestly. Aside well, we from, know how they beat the Bears. I mean, even yeah. aside from the field goal, though. <laughs> aside yeah. from the field goal, I, I don't just think, thought I don't overall think the Bears outplayed them. I agree with Trey you. Trey Burton, their tight end, was injured late. Right. So that's one of, of their favorite targets because they really – Aside from Robinson, who had a great game, they don't really have any other targets. Taylor Gabriel's okay, but... Yeah, they, they've got some nice pieces. No standout yeah. guy, but I just didn't understand why they didn't give the ball to Tariq Cohen more. Tariq Cohen has been their, their playmaking yeah. guy all season. Yeah. He's their version, even though he's not as good, he's their version of Tyreek Hill. Yeah, yeah. And he was a guy they didn't run too many pass plays for. They didn't really get creative with him out the backfield. So I, I thought the Bears outplayed them, but the Eagles moved on. Shout out to Cliff. I know that's his team. Um, but I just don't see how that Eagles secondary is going to hold up against this Saints. Oh, it's definitely team. not. Yeah, I, I don't see not how they can do that. With the way Drew Brees played this season, I can't. And they're, they're, I mean, the Eagles secondary is already banged up right. anyway. Yeah, I mean, they, they were fortunate. I mean, the Bears don't have, you know, that kind of the a weapons, quarterback. Right. They don't, or, or, or the weapons that, you know, that, that Drew Brees has. I mean, when you talk about guys, the running backs who can catch. I mean, uh, Kamara was uh, second in the league. And uh, total touchdowns, and those guys can catch out of the backfield like nobody's business. And then when you add, uh, you know, the receiving corps that they have with Michael uh, Thomas and, and the rest of those guys, come on, man, the Eagles are not going to be able to do nothing with that. that it's going to be it's going to be tough for them. Kamara it's really and be tough. Ingram catching passes out of the backfield. Yeah. Just, yeah. This ain't the Bears. This ain't the Bears offense. And and no disrespect to Trubisky because I think he had a pretty good season um, in this, this no year, Drew but Brees. he's no Drew Brees. Not even close. Exactly. Well, that and I also I just don't think Sean Payton knows who they are, and he's mm -hmm. not. I mean, we know Alvin Kamara is going to get his touches. Ingram, Thomas, they're going to get their touches. I think I don't know if because Matt Nagy first time in the playoffs. Or if they just maybe because the game wasn't going their way early and they kind of went away from their game plan, he just didn't feed the ball to his best players. He should have been yeah. giving the ball to his running backs. And they were in the game. Right. So it wasn't, you know what I mean? It wasn't like they were getting spanked the whole time. And it was right. like, no, they were in they, the game yeah. until the end. They were a team all year. We saw them be very creative with everything they did with their running backs. Mm -hmm. And they didn't show it in a playoff game. Yeah. And even with all that, they still had a chance to win that game. Yeah. So the Saints on that turf are very tough to beat. And, 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 and the, the one other difference, uh, when you're talking about a veteran core of guys, a veteran, seasoned veteran coach right. who knows how to make adjustments, even though he'll he'll do a little couple of crazy things. That's just our Sean Payton style. But it's not it's not the Bears. The Bears they don't have that that veteran right. you know, leadership, and that 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 counts in the playoffs. You right. need that you know in the playoffs. You need that veteran leadership, guys that can calm things down. All right, you might be down by a touchdown, might be down by a field goal. But we know what we have to do, and you need guys like that that can lead the way. Drew Brees is a guy that will get that done for you. Uh, Sean Payton is a coach that can get that done for you. They, they, they know how to win, even if they're, if they're down and they have to do things a little bit differently, they know how to do that. The Eagles didn't have to face that with the Bears because we're talking about a young Very team, young re team, relatively young team, and Khalil Mack was amazing. 
I think that's, you know, him single-handedly, I think, turned around that, that whole franchise, him being able to, to go over to Chicago, but they don't they just didn't have that veteran leadership. I think that's yeah. what he missed. Yeah, it was it was all guys. I mean, uh, but they'll Khalil, be back. Oh, absolutely. Khalil Mack, this is only his second career playoff game. Um, exactly, as good as he is. Right. You know, and he played and, well. Uh, uh, Fuller, the the, the cornerback. I right. mean, this is, all these guys, these guys they, are pretty A lot young. of young core. I mean, they missed their safety, Eddie Jackson. Eddie yeah. Jackson might have made a difference because – uh, Alshon Jeffries really lived in the middle of that field. Yeah, so he, on on big big conversions over the middle of the field, Alshon Jeffries was killing them. Bears had no answer for that. It's going to be a lot tougher. And to just go back on that point, you guys were talking about the Cowboys too. Um, I really like the Cowboys' ability to just be able to run on the Rams. Yeah, Stab man, you pointed out the Rams' defense has not been that good this year. Mm-hmm. I could really see the Cowboys playing ball control offense against them and just running the ball, running down their throat, running down their throat. A couple play action passes to to Cooper, stretch the yeah. field a little bit. And they'll take control of the tempo and the whole pace of the game with their running game. I tell you one thing, though, the, the Cowboys' chances will live and die with Dak Prescott. He's gonna, ha- he's gonna have, he's gonna to have to make, he's gonna have, have to a make, game where he's doing what he did last week and running down and getting touched. Right. He's gonna have to do all of that. He's gonna have to make a couple big plays for them. He, just like you mm-hmm. said last, he had to, even though Zeke looked great, there were times where it was like, yo, Dak's got to make a play. Yeah, here. and he did. So he's gonna have to make some plays in this one too. He, 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 def- he definitely did. I just I I'm still picking the Rams in this one, but again, you know I, I give them a better chance at beating the Rams than I give the the Eagles uh, beating the Saints, and that and and it also goes back to that that uh, veteran leadership again because again these we're talking about a relatively young team with the Rams. They got a couple of older guys, but as far as like the core guys, you know, golf. Uh, Gurley, he's he's relatively young. They don't have too much playoff experience, so I think that that could play a part into it. The Cowgirls got their first playoff victory in over a decade, but yeah, well, yeah, I mean, but I, I just think that two both inexperienced teams um, from from a winning perspective. Neither yeah. one of these teams have really had deep playoff runs. Um, so, I mean, the Rams, if if they get plays, um, you know, Talib is back. He hasn't looked good this year. Brandon Cooks, you know, those guys have been deep in the playoffs. But other than that, the Rams really don't have anybody yeah. who's made any type of run in the playoffs. So maybe if they could rely on those guys, they could kind of turn the tide. But from what I see, the weather's supposed to be pretty clear out there. I don't, you know, if Zeke is running the ball and he's oh, getting his touches and he's he's getting in the rhythm early, could be a problem. It's going to be a long day for the Rams because they're going to have trouble getting off the field. Yep. Yeah, well, we'll see. Shout out to Winston from Queens who wrote that fan mail question. Uh, moving on to another one also to do with the NFL playoffs. Brandon from the Bronx wrote in, do you guys think Andrew Luck can out Patrick Mahomes in the hey. divisional round? Uh, you hey. know what? Let's let Eric answer that question. Hey, I that, he's been that's waiting his to boy. Talk about the Colts. Hey. You know, <laughs> that's why he came back because the Colts got a victory <laughs> in, the, in the playoffs. No, no, you know. And then he saw we were on Hot 97, too. So he's nah, like, you nah, know, you know let, me, let me come back in now. Trip, Trip told me, you know, I've been watching from home, you know, and, and Trip told me, he was like, you know, things is just rolling, man, but we just need that, that little bit of Sasson <laughs> you bring to the game, you know. So that's why I had to come back. But, uh, you know, I remember you guys really were kind of down on my man Andrew Luck about coming back this year. And I'm not one to. Pat myself on the, I'm, I, I'm I didn't say I, am, I didn't I say running. anything bad Listen, about Andrew no, Luck. Uh, to answer the question, no, absolutely. And here's why: it is not going to be just the Andrew Luck show. And that's what I really like about my Colts this year. This is first time in a very long time that the Colts actually have a well-rounded team, where it doesn't rely on Andrew Luck throwing the ball 40 times to beat you. We can run the ball now. The yeah. defense, even though the defense isn't lights out, we're not talking 85 Bears. We're not even talking 2018 Bears. Yeah. But the defense is good enough where they will keep you in the game and it won't turn into a shootout. I think they got a decent run defense, but their pass defense is not too great. I think the pass defense is better than people want to give it credit for. I think if you if you look overall, second half of the season, right, when the team really started to Texans gel, isn't really good. Okay. You know, Aside from example. the Texans, they're giving up 17 points a game as a defense. They're the number. They're the fifth-rated defense in efficiency in the league, second half of the season. So the team started to gel. It's a lot of no-name guys. If you don't watch the Colts, you don't know who these guys are. Aside from like Malik Cooker, who was a high first-round pick, these are a lot of guys that nobody knows about. Yeah. So from a flash standpoint, no, they don't stand out. But they get the job done. DeAndre Hopkins probably was the best receiver in the league this year. What did he do last week against that Colts defense? I mean, he didn't, I mean, he didn't right. do too much. Yeah. So, too much well, that, again, I mean, that's what their f- game plan was going in. Right. The so, first time they played, DeAndre Hopkins lit him up. And that was week five. Yeah. Yeah. Then they that was played in the second, the second time. The second time, time. He, he got held to 36 yeah. yards the second time. Yeah. So, as the team yeah. started to gel, 
Again, you got to remember, new head coach, new defense. They don't have anywhere else to throw. I mean, Fuller was out, then Thomas was out. Yeah, but, all right, uh, again, uh, so if we, take, if we take T.Y. Hilton off the Colts, there's not named guys across the board there either. Eric well, Ebron flamed Ebron, out in Detroit. I guess. Yeah, well, but he's, but he's been beasting this season. Because though. he's got a quality quarterback to throw yeah. the ball now. But, again, these are guys who look better with Andrew Luck. There's a lot of no-name guys on both sides. I, the Chiefs, are we going to shut down the Chiefs? Absolutely not. We know their offense is good. But that's I'm where Marlon Mack comes I'm in. I'm just saying when you're, when you're talking about a pass defense against the Texans, that's not, you know, I mean, well, you're going up against the Chiefs now. That's Tyree right. Kill, that's, Travis Kelsey. It's a d- different Well, that's animal. the thing. The thing is, because if the question is that we're just saying can he outdo uh, Mahomes, it's possible that he can because the Chiefs' defense is so bad. Right. And I mean, the, they got Eric again, Berry back team. a couple of weeks, you know, right. towards I the think end of the, the season. The, the key to the game is, is everybody's going to make a big deal about the quarterbacks and they should. They're the big-name guys. It's really going to be about the Colts' offensive line and running the ball. Yeah. If they can run the ball, Texans have the number one rated run defense in the league. And Marlon Mack just ran for over 140 yards against them. Mm-hmm. If the Colts control the clock and do the same things, keep the Chiefs off the field. That's the key to beating the Chiefs. Yeah. You got to keep them off the field. Only the Rams can beat them in a Tecmo Bowl type game of 55, 54 to 50. Yeah. Everyone else, you've got to play a little bit of ball control. You got to keep them off the field. Yeah. And I, I expect the Colts to do that. Unless the Colts fall behind really quickly in this game, and then Andrew Luck's got to throw the ball 40 times, it's going to be a balanced offense, a lot of Marlon Mack, a lot of just quick throws. And I think the Colts will be fine in this game. I, I, will, I will say this. I agree with you uh, uh, on the Colts definitely having a balanced offensive attack. Uh, because Marlon Mack definitely came on late in the season. He right. did not have a good uh, start to the season. Right. And Ebron played lights. I had him on my fantasy team. Lights out this season. Uh, I think he was fifth, I think, in total touchdowns. Yeah, first among tight ends. Yeah, yeah first among tight ends, but fifth uh, amongst all players in total touchdowns. Amazing. And then, I mean, we know what T.Y. Uh, Hilton can do. The offensive line actually has been protecting Andrew Lee. Right. And that's one thing, like, I mean, this is with any team. If you don't have an offensive line that's going to protect you, you might as well just give it up right. Right, right there. So I do think they can go toe-to-toe. I, I, I'm, I'm picking the Chiefs to win this one at home. I just, uh, I mean, I don't know, man. Mahomes is just amazing, man. What he, what he did this season, uh, all, all pro uh, quarterback, by the way. He second, was the best quarterback in the league. Second year. And those guys, I thought they might have missed a little bit of a beat with the whole Kareem Hunt situation and, and him, you know, you know, being released from the team and whatnot, they really didn't. They have not missed a beat. That the offense is still amazing. I, so I don't, I don't know if the Colts go to, to Kansas City and win this game. But I do think that they can go back and forth with them. The offense is going to go back and forth because the Chiefs' defense is so weak. I have a strong feeling that the, <coughs> the Colts are going to sit in a lot of. Uh, it was highlighted last week. Chris Collinsworth kept bringing it up about how the Col- how much de- uh, zone defense the Colts play. Mm-hmm. I guarantee you. And you guys know this because you're Giants fans. They will take a uh, uh, they will take the plays out of what that '90s Giants team did to the Buffalo Bills, where they will sit with a bunch of defensive backs on the field mm-hmm. and say, "All right, if your running back who's unproven can beat us, so be it. But we're not going to allow Mahomes and Hill and Kelsey to just go up and down the field." That's I, the thing. That's I, a, I, I guarantee you. That's, a, that's a, tall, a tall task to I'm, ask. Hey, I'm not saying I never said it's easy. But I guarantee you the Colts will sit back in a lot of dime and quarter coverage mm-hmm. and say, we'll take our chances. Because if your running back is good enough and you're patient enough to stay with it, then you'll beat yeah. us. Well, but then if, that also kind of takes away a little bit from uh, Mahomes' strength, though, if you have to be forced to run the ball. And that's what, and that's what you want them to do. You want them, the Chiefs, we know they can score. But you don't want them scoring in five plays, six plays. Those yeah. are the demoralizing drives. It's yeah. almost like when you're playing the Warriors in basketball. You can't allow them just run up and down the court. Shooting threes and all And shoot threes because yeah, there's no way you can keep up. You know what I'm saying? But if you slow them down and make them take tough shots late in the shot clock yeah. and grind out every possession, that's how you beat them. That's exactly what the Colts are going to do. We'll see if it works. But I guarantee you the Colts are going to say, hey, we'll sit back in deep coverage. And if you're willing to take all the underneath stuff and be very patient with the ball, so be it. And if you go 12, 15 plays and score on us, then we got to live with that. But I'd rather you do yeah. that than two plays, boom, boom, and now it's seven nothing. Kills in the end zone. Yeah, I can, I can see it. Listen, they, I mean, they, they, I'm not. They have a. I actually, I think the Colts have a better chance of winning than either one of the two uh, <laughs> road teams in the NFC. So I, I'll definitely, I'll definitely give them that. Um, but like I said, I'm still picking the, the Chiefs to to win the game. But uh, we'll see how it goes this weekend. Yep, and the other AFC matchup, you have Phillip Rivers trying to beat Tom Brady for the first time in his career. He's beaten the Patriots before in the playoffs, but that's uh, with Matt Castle 
uh, as opposed to Tom Brady, I think, back in 2008. Um, so he, he's looking to beat Brady. He has, it kind of seems like a last chance for Phillip Rivers because he's getting up there in age as well in that uh, class of 2004 uh, quarterback class. But, I mean, I think out of all the underdogs this weekend, I think uh, probably the Chargers actually have the best chance out of all the underdogs. I know, I mean, it's Tom Brady, it's Gillette Stadium. He hasn't done it before. But I think the Chargers could probably pull off an upset. I think they have a much better team. Patriots uh, have a pretty shoddy defense this year. So I think, you know, then we might see Phillip Rivers get the W. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm rooting for Phillip Rivers. I like them. I thought before the season that they could be a pretty good team. I just really wish that Melvin Gordon was healthy, though. Like, he's a little banged up, and he, was, he needs to be big yeah. in this game. Um, I am picking them as well, though. Um, because they finally got Joey Bosa back to go with, uh, you know, um, with the other DM, Melvin Ingram. And like I said, if Melvin Gordon is healthy, then they got a legit shot because they got a lot of weapons. They can stretch the field. They can do a lot of different things to keep the Patriots off balance. Patriots have looked very sloppy all year. But come playoff time, they're a whole different that's animal. A, that's the thing. A, yeah, and, and that's, that's the thing. And, you know, it's one thing that, you know, regular season, you might be able to get one in on the Patriots, but right. it's hard to go – into to Foxborough and get a win, is it's gonna be it's gonna be real uh, real hard for for the Chargers in this game. I'm going I'm going with the, with the Patriots in this one. I just I I can't see Phil Rivers coming into Foxborough and and beating the Patriots. I just I just can't see it. Um and and they've played really well. He's having a probably maybe one of his, his best seasons uh, this year in, in a couple of couple of years actually. But I just can't see him going into Foxborough right now and, and, and beating the Patriots. I'm sorry. I know the Patriots have the ups and downs this season, but it's still Tom Brady. It's still Foxborough. They're still playing at home, and they still got arguably the greatest coach of, of all time in Bill That's Belichick. And he can pick apart any team if you give him a, 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 a couple of minutes on the field, and, and he'll do that. So I'm still going with the Patriots on this one. Yeah, I and like you say, Gordon's dead knee is, is a problem. He's not 100 percent. And you give the fact that, uh, like you mentioned, Belichick had that they had that week off, but he had that week to really scheme. Like exactly. He, so you give the him moment two weeks? the the moment the Colts won, they already knew the winner of Baltimore San Diego was coming. So yeah. they they were able to start game planning a little earlier. They didn't have to really wait for the whole first round to be done. Mm -hmm. The moment the Colts won, it was like, all right, one of these teams is coming. Yeah. So this is our plan for that team. This is our plan for that team. Um, the Chargers can't fall behind early in this game, man. They oh no! If they do it. So you, you let you let Tom Brady get two touchdowns on you early. You can yeah, kiss they, they cannot fall behind early. The Chargers, I think, got to start fast. Um, That's the only way they they stay. Yeah, in they've got to start fast, early. and they've got to they've they've got to play a clean game the way they against against the Ravens. They didn't turn the ball over. Mm -hmm. They were willing to punt the ball if they had to. They didn't force anything. They stood patient with their offense. They've got to do the same thing. They fall behind 10-3, 14 nothing. It's lights out. This season's done. Yeah, I agree. I agree, hundred percent. We we'll gotta wait. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a long weekend. It's gonna be a long football. It's tough, weekend. man, because this is one of the first times that I can think of where all four underdogs are like legitimate contenders. Yeah. Not saying all four are gonna win, but you can make a case for each, each one of the underdogs to say they could go in Eagles? there and win. Yeah, that's the one that I don't think is gonna win. I mean, you what could never count out the because, champs. But we're talking about the the team, the opponents that they're playing. But as far as are they an actual contender? Yeah, they're. they're I mean, they're, they're the champs. Look what the, I mean. Thank you, Eric. They're the champs. You can't count them out. You know what? I was, I was, I, I, I was about I had to give a feeling you some props. They would win clips. last week, and they did that. Mm -hmm. But I just don't think they have a chance in hell I, for this one. I think like the, like the Vince McMahon theme song. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, Eagles and um, and the, and the Patriot Charger game too. That's a situation where if you're the coach, you got to get creative. I guarantee the Eagles got to pull out some sort of trick play. You have to. Yeah. It doesn't even have to be anything too fancy or too creative. Maybe you fake a punt. Maybe you do a sneak something. on side or something. You know but you're going to have yeah, you're gonna have to do <laughs> you know something. Sure and I think the Chargers in that same mode. If you're Anthony Lynn, you got to have something in the back of your, your back pocket yeah. that's like, yo, if the offense is not really moving the ball up and down the field, we might have to fake a do punt something. here. Yeah, we might have to do something to light a spark. Because those are situations where you just can't allow the game to just go back and forth and yeah. think we're going to keep up with them. So I wouldn't be surprised if Doug Peterson has a another Philly special on a play card on a play chart yeah. that he pulls out just to spark things up for them. I can definitely yeah. see it. But we'll see. But uh, out of all the underdog teams, you think the Colts have the best chance of winning? I do. A little bit of bias there. 
Absolutely. And on your side, um, you're saying the Colts as well? Yeah, I, I mean, yeah uh, as, as far as an underdog team, yeah, I would, I would give the Colts the best chance. Of, uh, but you still think the Chiefs are going to win? Uh, yeah, I'm still picking the Chiefs, but if I'm just, you know, who's, who I think has the best chance. Your official chance. prediction is all the favorites uh, for this yeah, week? Yeah, I'm going teams. yeah, I think it's going to be a clean sweep. And you, uh I actually, Colts. I like Colts as one underdog, and I like I really like the Cowboys, the other underdog. Yeah, I, yeah. I agree. I like those two, and then I, and like we talked about too. The reason I like the Colts, not just on a bias standpoint. I, I hate mean, to say it, but you know, <laughs> um, again, the Chiefs. Andy Reid hasn't really proven he can win a playoff game with the Chiefs. He's like one in four. Yeah. And so Andy Reid always scares me with his play calling and just the way he handles things. I mean, I know this. Team pretty much was in the playoffs last year, and they stunk it up against a, a really bad Titans team that they should have beat. Yeah, and the defense was was a lot better. And the defense was better year last year. Than, 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 so, but I mean, you know, they didn't. The offense wasn't clicking like it is, you know, this year yeah, as but, well. I mean, to a certain extent, they were like uh, some of that. I think some we gotta like call yeah, it what Andy Reid is. Is Andy Reid gets very conservative in the playoffs. He does, but he also had Alex Smith at quarterback. So you kind of don't have a choice in the matter because he's not slinging the football. 60, he doesn't have the same yards. arm, no, no That's way. What I'm of course not. So but he's fortunate this year. When they to opened have up the offense goals. last year, they looked like world beaters. Yeah, I mean, you know, and I don't because Alex Smith had a, a really good season last year, but he's just not the guy who's throwing the football down the All field right. for you. So what was the excuse for not giving Kareem Hunt the ball then? Listen, because they weren't throwing the ball down the field and they weren't handing the ball <laughs> up to Kareem Hunt. So I mean, I at least you would do listen, one. I'm not an Andy Reid fan. I know. So, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm, I can't explain. That's why it. I feel good about it because <laughs> yeah. we're going up against. It's not like we're going up against Belichick. We're not going up yeah. against a guy who's going to throw the kitchen sink at you. We're going up against a guy that if we know we keep it close, he's going to tighten up. Yeah. So we got. So we we got to wait and see. But I I I do think that that game is going to be the game of the, uh, of the weekend. I think it's gonna, it is gonna gonna wind up being a shootout. I don't Colts think Chiefs. Yeah, I don't think the Chiefs run away with this game at all. I think it's gonna be a close game. I think you know maybe a touchdown field goal in that range is gonna separate the two teams. All right, there you have it. Shout out to the fans that wrote in. Email address is fanmail at realfansrealtalk dot com. You could also hit us up on social media at realfantalk on Twitter and Instagram. Send us a message on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash realfansrealtalk.com. Make sure you click that like button if you haven't already done so. Our YouTube channel is uh, For the Fans Productions. You can also just search Real Fans Real Talk, and you have all our social media information on our website, realfansrealtalk.com. And uh, make sure you're checking us out live every Thursday, as some of you are watching now. Now, now we got to switch over to basketball as, uh, you know, Boogie Cousins looks to come back uh, on, you know, making his uh, debut for the Warriors January 18th is the tentative uh, return for him. And then that's the point of the season where the Warriors just pretty much win just about every game the rest of the year, or what do you think? No, I don't think so, because one, it's going to take a little while to get Boogie back into game shape. He hasn't actually played in a game yet, so I don't I don't see he comes back and they go on a 30-game winning streak or anything like that. They're going to win because, I mean, they're going to win regardless of whether he's whether there he's or there not. Whether he's there or not, they're a good yeah. team. But. He, he, he's not going to – he's not going to – we're not going to have that Boogie effect until, I think, the playoffs. Maybe like maybe the last like week or two of the season, he'll really be back into playing shape, but – Right now, you know what I'm saying, they're going to win the games they're going to win anyway, whether he's playing or not. And they're going to, his minutes are, he's going to, I'm pretty sure he's going to be on a restriction, uh, minutes restriction for the first couple of weeks as well anyway. So it's not, he's not coming back on 18 and he's going to play 40 minutes. Yeah. You know, night. so it's going right. to be But the game long. could be over in the first quarter, so. Yeah, but uh, even even still, I don't think he's, we're not, we're not going to see Boogie Cousins yeah, he's in gotta the first have couple some of weeks. Chemistry yeah. with everybody else yeah. too, but. They're not going to unleash him right away. I think um, minute restrictions, yeah. uh, figure out lineups, who you want to play with, who who should come to the bench first. Mm -hmm. And then also, whatever your ultimate game plan is for Boogie, you probably don't even want to show it yet anyway. Yep. Yep. You'll probably start to and unleash the, that come April. Now, they, they came up with the nickname for that lineup, the Hampton Five. This starting lineup, all five previous All-Stars. Well, what's a good nickname for them? Um... I mean, the Monstars, I don't know. I guess. <laughs> I mean, it's it's going to be tough to beat those guys when they're really Yeah, that, that five. Yeah. If, yeah. Especially if Boogie gets back to Boogie. 
That five, man. Yeah. I, I don't care who's on the bench. I don't know. That doesn't matter who's coming off the bench because that five. That's why I'll say the games are going to be over in the first quarter when you yeah. have those five. When he, when he, now, when he's healthy and playing like before the injury, that, that seems going to be a problem. The only people, only team that can beat them is them, and that's it. Yeah, it's and it's that ain't really gonna tough to. It's gonna to be tough to get one game off them, let alone a series off them. Yeah. Because, I mean, you that's a team that guys could take the night off and you still win. Yeah. Well, the, you have the chance that Boogie and Draymond Green get suspended. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. I mean, the only shot of winning is, is, <laughs> yeah, is exactly. Boogie hooks off on KD. Yeah, exactly. Room. And knocks him out. He knocks him out. He did dunk on him kind of hard in practice, so maybe right. they got beef down. Right. <laughs> he knocks him out. <laughs> then Draymond goes on his kicking spree again, and exactly. then you got two of the five out. But then they, maybe you might have a chance. Then you win that game, maybe. Oh, yeah, yeah exactly. You win, you win that, win that game. game. Maybe, because you still have two of the top five the b players in the league on the same yeah. team and Steph Curry and Kevin Durant. So Exactly. Yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing how they put that together. But uh, one team that's not as impressive, the New York Knicks, looking to possibly make a move. Discussing trading Enos Cantor for Zebo, Zach Randolph. Um, I like it, really? I, and and I'm gonna tell you. And Cancer's my guy. I was rocking with Cancer from OKC. I was I was telling people, yo, he's good. He's really good. And he got to the Knicks. He's been bowling for the Knicks, but he's not gonna be in their in their plans going forward because they can't afford to to bring him on and then try to sign two uh, the top free agents next season. So I understand the move. Uh, it's, it's more of a long term thing. They they like uh, Cancer. He likes playing for the Knicks. But, you know, this is all about next season's free agency class, and this is what they need to do. Um, they're already, you know, losing right now. I mean, what did they, I think they're second to last place or, or third from the bottom. They ain't East. losing enough. Well, yeah, they're not, they're, they're not even losing enough, so that's why they got to trade cancer because <laughs> he's been beasted. So they gotta we we can't have guys. you over here, you know, winning games for us. We need to get rid well, of exactly. I mean, they're trying everything because, you know, they, they move him to the bench a little bit and try yeah. to make it seem like it was about his defense. Had nothing to do with, with his defense. No. The Knicks are tanking it away finally. Yeah. Uh, they, they've actually figured it out the last couple of years. Let's just tank this thing yeah. completely away. It, 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 um, I mean, it, it, it makes perfect sense. The trade has nothing to do with now. Yeah, absolutely nothing to do with that. All for next season's free agency class. We want they want to free up as much cap room as possible. Um, Zebo's on the expiring contract, and I mean, there's a couple other guys that they would have to put together. He'll be to, reunited to for his, with his former coach for uh, this yeah. season. You know, so I, I again, I like the move if they can actually move him as much yeah. as I like Cancer. But nah, you make the move. I mean, for the Kings, it makes perfect sense. They've got a, a nice young team. Mm -hmm. um, Fox looks amazing. Yeah. Bogdanovich, Buddy Hield, all those guys are playing yep. well. Uh, Willie Cauley Stein is actually starting to play better. And so if you get a guy like Cantor who can give you double doubles, yeah. I mean, it's a perfect fit for them. Yeah. You know, are they contenders in the West? No, no. but they can sneak into the they seventh probably, AC. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's perfect for them and for us, it's perfect. We're trying to get tank it away either for Zion or RJ Barrett. Mm -hmm. And either, um, oh my goodness, either one of those guys. That's that's what it's really about for us. It would be amazing. Yeah, it's, we it's, we got a lot of catching up to do on the losing end too. Well, we only like two games back. Yeah. And you got to think, <laughs> back from Kevin Love is, is going to come back soon enough for the Cavs, so that's yeah, going to help them. The Cavs, I figure, win. might, you know, whatever, but they might want to lose at this point, nah. too. But. They do, they, but. Yeah, not, because once Kevin Love co comes back, they're not going to have him sitting on the bench and not playing. Yeah. They're going to play him, and then Colin Sexton has that chip on his shoulder. Like, Colin Sexton wants to compete. Yeah. We got a bunch of guys that don't want to compete. So it's perfect for us. You know? I mean, the rookies <laughs> want to show what they're made of, and they're they're out there, you know, playing well, good. Well, the rookies are playing good. It's just... I, I like, you know, how the Knicks are, like, you know, in the first half, they'll get a good lead to show that they can win, and in the second half, they lose. Yeah, yeah. Just, so that, know, that's yeah. the perfect way to do it. Yeah. Show, show the free agents, here. Yeah, this is what we can do. But we want to lose, and that's why. Yeah. That's Fiz what they should do. The that rest lets you of know Fizdale is on board with the tank. Yeah, he, exactly. He's coaching the first half, and then the second yeah. half, he's like, put Frank out there. Exactly. Let Frank get a little yeah. bit. Let him, let him get some run. Let him get oh, Frenchy Frank is injured. Oh, we got to find somebody yeah. worse. <laughs> let that Frank play. <laughs> there is nobody worse. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> let, let, I mean, he's only a fourth worst point guard on like the third worst team in the league. Let him yeah. play a little yeah. bit. Yeah, well, that's cool though. Shout out, shout out to bird. French Frank. <laughs> Last shout out you get around here. <laughs> exactly. But, one, yeah. one of the better uh, point guards in the league, CP3, is out for two to three more weeks. But Harden uh, 
Still putting up uh, video game numbers. So. What is what is uh, six step shots and all of that <laughs> in the mix? Did you see Steph Curry saying, uh, you know, Harden does <laughs> yeah, that? Yeah, but like, Harden did it. Why, Harden does not? it. Did it? Was that? I do the three step back three and yeah. uh, get called for the travel, but Wait Harden doesn't. Exactly. Son, what's what's going on with that? They probably figured the Warriors got enough advantages. Yeah. They don't need to have now add on Steph taking six steps <laughs> before he takes a shot on top of yeah. all of that. That's what we worried about with the Rockets anyway, though. You know, um, CP3 just, you know, he's always struggled to stay healthy, and now it's really bad. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know, and, and that's the thing. And, and shout out to James Harden. You know, I don't want to take anything away from what he's doing because he's having another great season. He may even be the best offensive player in basketball, but I don't care about none of that. All I, I care about is are you going to play in the playoffs? If Chris Paul goes down, you're going to come and sneak it up in, in the second half of back-to-back -back games and go it was 0 for 10 or something like that will. from the three? And he probably will. So I mean, if Chris Paul is gone, then it's all season. on his back. Who is, who, who's winning a championship by themselves? Nobody's well, doing that. I'm glad you said that, Stat, man, because according to you guys, this is what Carmelo went there for, right? When I said Carmelo was washed up, you guys yeah, said, but you no, know what? no, Carmelo is he's still a quality player in this the league. The problem with, with, with that was... They let their defense go. What? Tre Trevor Ariza and, and, and Juan uh, Buta. Juan Buta, yes. If they had kept those guys, which they could have kept both of them. It would have been tough, though. It would have, but you're in a, in a situation where we know Chris Paul's injury prone. Mm -hmm. He's not getting any younger. Your window for winning a championship is closing very fast. Right. With that, because we know James Harden cannot do it by himself. He can't even get you a quarter by himself, clearly. I think so, the window closed as soon as Boogie Cousins signed with the Warriors. No, I, think the, I think the window closed the moment that they gave Chris Paul a new deal. Yeah. And then, like Tripp said, you couldn't. what made this team special last year was the other pieces. Yeah. When they were able to bring other pieces around their two main stars, and we saw Clint Capella flourish, and he got a big new deal, and Trevor and, and uh, Eric Gordon. And then once you start chipping away at that depth that they had, now the team isn't yeah. as special anymore. And, that, and that's the thing. We we know the liabilities that come along with Carmelo Anthony, but if you have those guys there that are playing the defense where he lacks completely in that area, where Harden lacks in that area, even though he's got a little that much better, but he's not a defensive player. Chris Paul plays defense, but you don't even know if he's going to be in the game. So Melo can't excel in that kind of a situation because now there's too much Melo pressure and, and they kind of and they did kind of they did kind of throw him under the bus a little bit too when they was losing early and it really didn't have too much to do with Melo it was really they did not have any kind of right but defensive at, at all they, they, they can't guard just, anybody on the wing I, I don't even know if we should be surprised it just seems like whenever Melo is removed from a situation the situation looks a lot better it does, but you know what? You, we can't really base it off of that because we we gotta we talking about a team that's going to be in this thing until deep into the playoffs. So that's when we can really say if the team was better or worse. I mean, I think it's clear that they look a lot better now. That you yeah. know, this is the real issue with Melo, right? Melo comes on the court, and ten years ago we could live with him being one dimensional because he was so good in that one dimension. Yeah. But when you don't bring anything else to the table, You're but yet we still got to find a way to get you shots. Now you're taking away from the rest of the team. It's, it's not a shock that OKC looks a lot better without Melo because they don't have to force his 15 shots a night now. Yeah. They can just play within the floor of their offense and let other guys get their shots. It's no secret that the Rockets look a lot better now that Melo, we don't have to keep spoon feeding you shots so that, you, that you're happy and that you want to yeah. play. It's, it's not like, all right, Melo's scoring drop, but he's grabbing us rebounds. He's playing solid defense. He brings nothing else to the court. Yeah, well, I mean, that's been his problem from the beginning. Right. He, he, he wants to be that guy. He's and, not anymore. And 10 years problem. ago, we could live with that. When you were still averaging 25. Right. Yeah, yeah. You were still averaging 25, and you were very efficient offensively. Yeah. But when, you're, when, you're, when you want to take 20 take shots, 20 shots and you're going 25. 8 of 20, yeah, it's, it's not gonna, it's not we gonna can't work. live with that. And then they don't have any defense at all. So it's definitely going to look even worse. But... Again, Harden, you got to prove it in the playoffs. I don't care about what you're doing. I don't even care if Harden gets another MVP this season. That does not matter if in the playoffs you fold again. He will. I mean, definitely now at this point because now, with, you know, with Boogie <laughs> coming back, it's not even going to be close. The West is deep, man. But, yeah, but they are deep. And, honestly, I don't know that Houston makes it to the Western Conference Finals. Uh, I don't think they will. This year. I think the road I, is just too tough. Yeah, I, and I really, I really don't. I don't know if Chris Paul is going to be there in in the playoffs. And 
I can't. I don't see James Harden turning into MJ and just leading the Houston Rockets through the Western Conference gauntlet like that. Sorry. Well, even MJ had Pippen, so you know. You gotta have somebody uh, along for the ride. As good as uh, James Harden is, I just don't see it. It's gonna be a tough role. I mean, this is who they are. They're exciting for the regular season. They can be exciting in a playoff series, but I don't think they're a threat. Well, what happens is people become prisoners of the moments and. I'm sitting there, I'm watching it, and people are talking about well, James Harden's the best player in basketball right now. I'm like, we just had a couple of good games. He had a, a nice month. Yeah, he had a nice month, which doesn't matter. Because when the second season starts, you know, in April or May around that time, is he going to be playing that? Is he going to be doing the cooking dance <laughs> during the playoffs? I don't know. I don't, think, yeah. I, don't, I don't know if they make it out the second round of the playoffs. Yeah, I don't, I don't think they're that strong. And... Uh... It was kind of fool's gold last year. Like they went to the Western Conference Finals, but and again because I, they pushed Golden State, I think we thought of them as better than what they really were. Well, we saw it, and once you take away that defense, that's it. And then you lose Chris Paul. I I still feel like they win that series if Chris Paul doesn't get hurt, just because everything that they lacked in those last two games is everything that Chris Paul brings yeah. to the team with controlling the the tempo of the game. They don't take 33-point shots in the second well, half. Chris and Paul got them. injured in the, in the second half of game six or something, right? Game five. Game four. five, as they were winning oh, okay. game yeah, five. Yeah, and they were still won game five. Yeah. But he's not allowing that to happen. Yeah, but he's the slowing the tempo I, of the game down. He is. He is. A lot. And then and he's, no, you're not just taking every shot you want to take, all these bad shots. They were, they were taking bad shots. It wasn't yeah, even like they, they were taking good shots. They still big first half leads in both those games. It's but not Chris as if Paul controls the tempo of those but games. Harden had two, three three-point shots that were fouls, and the refs didn't call that either in the first half. And then he was just frustrated, throwing up whatever. I mean, that makes up for the two hundred he gets every year when yeah. nobody really fouls him. Exactly. He, had, they I gave mean, him the, he uh, initiates the, contact on the every foul play. On the, on the six-step back three, they gave him a foul. Right. On, they gave him a four-point play. That's crazy. I just don't understand how a guy can initiate all the contact. Yeah. And then still, like defenders will be backpedaling with their hands up. Yeah. And he. Lowers his shoulder into you, and it's, that's on you. Yeah. Uh, how do you call that? I mean, what, how are you supposed to defend that then? If I'm already backing away from the guy and he's still running into me. To the point where when they play in the Lakers, the guys are literally, they, they're playing just to make a point. They're walking up to him with their hands behind their back just to make a point to the refs. Like, yo, you giving him everything yeah. possible to get anything. Like, come on, man. I mean, man. you already walk. You already walk with the ball. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, you give him, you let him travel. You're like, yeah. come on. At least give us a break. Well, on maybe that. they're making up for that playoffs <laughs> this year because, you know, <laughs> they didn't call the three on that game. So maybe they're making up for it this year. Like, but nah, these refs got to get together. Especially that, 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 that six steps. But that since you brought up, up old stuff with Carmelo Anthony last week, I brought up the Browns, how after week two, we mm -hmm. were, the three of us were sitting here. Mm -hmm. I said the Browns win at least six games this year. You and Tripp laughed at me. So I just wanted to point that out. Browns were a different team. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, but they, they I was also, when I was said the, that Tyrod Taylor was the quarterback. Right. Yeah. So Tyrod was still the quarterback. I was, my thought on it was they were going to win three games, which was still a drastic improvement over not winning at all. <laughs> yeah. Right? And I'm sure Cliff could find the tape. I was one of the first people on a Baker Mayfield bandwagon saying Baker Mayfield was the best quarterback coming yeah, out. Yeah, you were saying for the Giants to draft Baker Mayfield. But he was off the board, yeah. yeah it it yeah. wouldn't have mattered. I mean, you guys still came out great anyway. Yeah, no. Nah, it's not I, to say, I'm, you know. I, I, I'm, I'm glad You guys didn't take Sam on. Darnold on that, so you're good. Yeah, <laughs> thankfully. Speaking of Sam Darnold and the Jets, they did get a new head coach. Yes, they did. Doesn't really matter. Yeah, uh, yeah Adam, Gase is a, Adam Gase is like a really good offensive coordinator. I don't like him as a head coach. Yeah. Um, he reminds me a lot of like Mike Martz with the Rams days where everything is focused on how tricky can we be offensively and you bring nothing else to the table. Well, the difference, though, is they had a couple of Hall of Famers on that offense. On the Rams team, yes. So yeah, when, right. you, when you got a Kurt Water, Marshall Falk, Isaac Bruce, and, and Torrey Hall. The greatest show on turf. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, you, you, can, you can get away with exactly. just focusing only on the offense. But when your receivers are, it was uh, in, in, in Amawa, what, what what's and, the guy's uh, name? Quincy, Quincy Anunwa. Yeah. When, <laughs> uh, Robbie Anderson. Exactly. When it's those guys, you can't really do it. They don't have a running when game. You're out there with a lot of guys that wouldn't even get drafted in a Madden fantasy. Yeah. Movie, it's, it's tough. It's really tough out there. So, man. yeah, when, when, that, when that happens, that's like when eight guys get injured. In, in the league, in the fantasy league, and then you're like, all right, fine, I'll just take one. Yeah, these guys. <laughs> yeah, it's, I don't, I don't really like the move for the Jets. I mean, I understand it. You got a young quarterback, and I hate this yeah, little term of quarterback him whisperer as, as offensive coordinator, then not as, as the head coach. That's, I think, that's the problem with a lot of 
these coaching hires. Like, they're hiring guys that are really only good at either offense or defense as opposed to somebody who has a good grasp of, of both sides of the football. Mm -hmm. So, it, it, and this is why it doesn't work out. We see the league going through quarterbacks like it's nothing. Well, blame Sean McVay. When you get a young, I'm serious, but when, when you get a young, when you get a young guy to come in who's an offensive coordinator and you see what he's done with Jared Goff. Yeah. Jared Goff looked terrible his rookie year. And when you get a guy, yeah. like I said, the term quarterback whisperer, and you get this young guy who can change the development of that guy. Or same thing with Matt Nagy. Trubisky looks a lot better this year he than he did he last year. I, I, yeah, so every, now every team with a young quarterback feels like we need that guy. We need a guy like that who can mold our young quarterback to become the next star of this league. But you still need a team. That's what they, what they miss. Right. I mean, the, guys the real them. question is, are the Jets going to draft correctly now? Are yeah. the Jets going to put the money into the defense because they got to get better on the other side of the yeah. ball? They got to get better on both sides of the ball. Well, they really got to get better <laughs> yeah. on the other side of the ball. Though. Yeah. But I mean, you, but you, need, you, you can't have Darnold and not have a receiver to throw to and not have a running back that, you know, that can take some of the pressure off. You gotta, there's a lot of holes with right. the Jets that they got to fix. Right. So what I expect them to do is try to follow the mold of what the Bears have done. Yeah. And what the Rams have done the last couple of years, you see teams with young quarterbacks because he's on a rookie deal. You throw all your money into the other pieces on the offense. So maybe the Jets make the push for Antonio Brown. Mm -hmm. Maybe the Jets go and make the push for Le'Veon Bell. Would Antonio Brown even? I mean, it would be a trade. trade so yeah, I'm really not. You know, I, I do. I think Antonio Brown will be better there. No, I don't think he'll be better yeah. there. But the Jets may say, look, let's put all our resources into getting a running back and a receiver right now. Yeah. Because we now, still got Sam Donald. You got to leave your umbrella yeah. in. Right. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> we get him right now. Yeah. Our quarterback's on, a, on his rookie deal. So we've got him for four so got, more years got, on the cheap. You got the money. You can down right. And now you just go all in. You know? Now, I mean, it's possible if they sign Le'Veon Bell, the then Jets. maybe Antonio Brown will come along too. Yeah. But. The, the Brown trade would be tough for them because they gave up so much to the Colts just to move up last year in the draft. Yeah. Remember, they gave up, not, not only they swapped the ones, but they gave up three number twos. Mm -hmm. So the Colts have their number twos, you know, for, now yeah. for this year and next year. So it's like it's only thing we can give up is a, is, a, is a first. And we still got a lot of other holes on this that team. If we give up giving up a first for Antonio Brown, though? I wouldn't do it. That's the thing. Now, he's, okay, he's worth, uh, he's definitely worth that. Yeah. I but mean, he's the, the best fact that wide, everything that's going down, top three wide receiver in the league. You might not get that. I wouldn't do it because even if you put Antonio Brown on that team, are they the best team in the AFC East? No. Okay. So now no, you're going to be I mean, paying a receiver top dollar to be maybe the second best team in your own division. Yeah. Which yeah. means maybe you're a wild card. But what team. else are you going to do? I think you got to play. What other places that they can right. trade them to? It's just, you know. I think you play it smart. I think you. You watch how the market plays out. There'll be other receivers, not of that stature, yeah. but there'll be other guys that you. And can I'm sure they're going to draft the. If the Cowboys don't sign Amari Cooper. You got yeah, Amari Cooper's. You know, still it's, it's, there might be other guys There's out there guys. that you could target, and still keep your your draft pick. I just think a guy like Antonio Brown, you only go after him if you're close enough. Because because you have to trade for him. Right, you got to yeah. trade for if him. You, if you do it, like, yeah, I, I definitely would would try to go after like I said, Amari Cooper, or one of yeah, those. Yeah, you good go after somebody that's... else that you can get much more reasonably priced and say, all right, we can still build and get our draft pick and and have some weapons here. You yeah. know, you can still do all that stuff. Yeah. I just wouldn't go crazy over Antonio Brown unless I felt like we're that close. Yeah. Do you think Brown goes to the same team as Bell? What do you think the chances of that happening is? Um, I don't. I don't. I'm sorry. I don't. But I don't think it's gonna happen because I don't. I can't see the Steelers losing Le'Veon Bell and then trading Antonio Brown to that same team. Well, they might trade to that team and then Le'Veon Bell like signs and free agency. Team that signs them. Yeah, you have to have a lot well, of that's money. That's what I was talking about. You with have, the Jets. You well, have to, yeah, you have to have a lot of money too because. Even though Le'Veon isn't going to get the years he wants, he's, he's going to get, get paid. Yeah. He may only get he may get like the Kirk Cousins deal where it's like a, <coughs> a three year at a crazy number, yeah, at eighty years. million over three, and it's like I right, we can live yeah guaranteed. we can live with the three years at this number. We won't go above three years. Yep. Yeah. So it could happen, but you got to be you got to be a really bad team with a lot of cap space. Yeah, <laughs> but I can't see it not on the, on a good team or play, definitely right. a playoff no, team no where way. they're going to get both no of way. those guys. Well, I that's can't see same the, the, the Jets, it. but anyway, moving along, uh, staying on football, big upset in college football. Not that Clemson won, but the fact that Clemson just destroyed Dominated. Alabama, it was unbelievable. We've never seen a Nick Saban team Not get beat down by that much. I was, going, I was, I was in my feelings uh, Monday Even in a regular it's, season it's, game, you know, nothing. Yeah. It just doesn't, you know, yeah, it's you unheard just don't of. see that happen. It's, just, it's really unheard it was, of. 
It was, it was a low. The I, tide didn't come in that day. Yeah, I don't. I don't know what happened, man. They got. They got washed. That's it. It's a, as simple as that. I can't say tide no more. Tide got washed out. Nothing less. The the tide got washed out, man. It was it was bad. Uh, fortunately, you know, I mean, they're gonna be back again next year, more than likely in the championship game. They they that got Clemson quarterback stock five, just went up a lot. Yeah, nineteen year old. Lawrence, yeah. yeah, they got five of of the top players uh, coming into college football coming to Alabama. They'll be five more four, but this was just an embarrassing I I don't even know what to say to this Yeah, one. it was it was bad, man. Um I had Alabama in that game. Um they scored to get it to 14-13. They missed the kick and then it was just like all downhill from that point. And yeah. I and I knew I, I, once when 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 they when they missed the extra point Something setting in me, you know, I started, I didn't feel right when they missed that extra point. Yeah, they, they like, the moment they missed the extra point, it was like, it was all downhill. Clemson yeah. scored really quick right after that. Clemson that gets the ball it. right back, scores again. And yeah. I think the most shocking thing to me, like Stabman said, not that they lost, because Clemson's a good team. Yeah. You know, this second title in three wow. years and four straight playoff appearances. They've been in three of the last four yeah. title games. But. I agree. Alabama was our coach. Yeah. There were several times that defensive players were looking over the sidelines. They didn't know what the call yeah. was. There were a couple yeah. times when a receiver would go in motion and the defender didn't know if he should stay with him or stay in his zone. They were completely out coached. They were not prepared. Yeah. Um, Trevor Lawrence killed them up the seams. You know, there was a play early in that game where he, where he hits Ross on a big third down over the middle of the field where the safety yeah. actually jumps up on nothing. Yeah. There was no route in front of him and the safety just jumped up. And then again, when Ross beats uh, him for the big touchdown, that really put it away yeah. late, where the safety is nowhere to be found. They got our coach, and that's the first time I think we could really say that about a Nick Saban team, yeah. Yeah. where they just looked bad all the way around. They had no answers offensively, defensively. Tua couldn't tell where the blitz was coming from. Not, yeah, it was. It was. It was they, ugly. Were, they were terrible that night. It got really ugly, but they will. But they will bounce. Tua stock went down. Absolutely. Yeah, but it, 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 he'll be all right though, because I mean, if somebody, this is really his first uh, season. And he had a he had he was having a Heisman season before the before the injury, so he'll be his, fine moving forward. His stock takes a hit not only because of this game, because he struggled in the Georgia game too. Yeah. You know, Jalen Hurts came in and saved them. We don't know if they would have made the playoffs anyway. They might have still but, lost and made the playoffs. Yeah. But the fact that he was struggling there and then yeah, he looks good in the semifinal game, but then he struggles in the championship game. Yeah. Maybe it's enough tape on him now where teams feel comfortable. I don't know, but we, he did struggle though. Yeah, so we'll see. But really quick, we're gonna we're gonna take a quick break. You know, we you know we gotta gotta highlight, you know, those that uh support real fans, real talk, support the brand. Uh shout out to uh Chrissy Band. She just dropped a new video for uh for for her her, her crush on you remix. If y'all don't know, I mean y'all from Brooklyn, y'all should know that's the old Junior Mafia song. Uh, that that um, Lil C's uh, song, as as a matter of fact, but uh, Chrissy Band's got the remix out right now. She looked good in the video. I'm gonna have to say that. So uh, shout out to <laughs> to Chrissy Band's. Shout out to Q uh, as well. Thank you again for hosting the cipher at the uh, third annual Real Fans Real Talk 2K tournament. But uh, whenever y'all ready, y'all just drop that video, man. Ladybug never came. Up. I'm about to smoke that ass like a loud pack Bitches want the beef, I cook the steak This an outback Coming out the face, put my fist Where her mouth at Call them shooter, Ruger, blow the whole fucking crowd back It's undeniable, the underground, I got it locked Don't need a man, just give me the money, the money to give me the top These hoes be acting, man, they faking it funny, they deal with the ops Remove a top until I'm at your front door, you pulling the cops I'm acting, I cannot fuck with no lazy, my energy match it I'm valid, sophisticated, oh, but I could get ratchet I'm fire, these Barbie rappers know I'm up in the plastic It's tragic I be the general hoes and fucking no maggots Yeah, he crushing on me, I ain't even know He better be a real one, cause I don't do the bogus He gotta have his own money, gotta keep me focused And he gotta wanna eat the pussy, then he give him home. I never throw shade and I'm always paid Bitches had to suck dick, mad I'm self-made I'ma slide on his face like an escapade Legs crossed on his neck, looking like a braid I need a hundred of the milli, shows in all cities And it won't be no fun without bringing all of my rippies Gonna need space for all of my bad bitties Bring hundreds and fifties They shaking ass and titties A lot of fake bitches getting left behind I was broke, not a thought When across they mind Now they see me moving up They respect my grind But it's still no free tickets Bitch, pay online My fans recognize me everywhere I go now The crowd wildin' at every one of my shows now They in the car, my song They bumpin' it so loud Moving real fast There ain't no reason to slow down I know you see me on the video 
right, welcome back. Shout out to Chrissy Bands again. She's actually uh, out tonight in Queens shooting her next video with uh, A Boogie with the hoodie. She actually invited us to come out, but you know, we're on the air tonight. But uh, maybe we might try to stop by a little bit later. But again, shout out to, to Chrissy Bands, Brooklyn. Gotta love it. And like I said, she looked good in that video. So, what you gonna do? Yep. Switching to baseball real quick. Machado and Bryce Harper are the big free agents. Uh, sources say uh, Machado might end up as a Yankee. Depending on how, much, how, that, how that check looking. You know, I'm, I'm from the old George Steinbrenner regime where we don't care about how much money we throw out. Mm -hmm. we, we just put it out. But, uh, I mean, that's what the source is saying. His preference is, is the Yankees. But I know the, the, the White Sox and a couple other teams have been making some pretty good offers. So, who know, you know, we don't know just yet, but I'm sure we'll find out within the next couple of weeks because he said he's going to make his decision um, in January. So, we'll, we should know soon enough. As far as Bryce Harper, um, I, I mean, I, don't think, I didn't think he was coming to the Yankees anyway, but uh, I think the, I know the Phillies made him a, a nice offer. Um, and there's a couple of other teams looking into Bryce Harper. But, I, honestly, I thought the market – I thought it would have been a – a lot more teams going crazy over these two guys than we've actually seen. Well, I mean, the price tag on them right. is like a little too crazy for them to, you know. It's like we walk by a, a Maserati dealership, we might want one, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. That's don't, what it is. Don't it's mean the, it's the price tag. And Bryce Harper had a down year last year. Yeah, he struggled a little bit last year. I think. Um, well, he's the one asking for less, looking at the for the most money. He's looking for more right. than Machado. Right. He's he's trying to set he's trying to set the rate. I think he'll still get paid. The Phillies are interested in both of them, so I'm sure the Phillies. You know, if yeah. one of them signs if Machado were to sign with the Yankees, I'm sure the Phillies will go all in. Oh, they have to on at getting that, Bryce because they want one of those guys. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, either way, they're gonna get paid, man. They're gonna get that money. They were, think, talk, they were talking about between for Machado between two two twenty and two seventy. Obviously, I mean, of course, he's gonna want the three hundred. Right, <laughs> yeah, he want top dollar, I, but yeah, you know, the market isn't really there either. Like Boston's not really in the running. They're always a big spender. They out of it. Mm -hmm. uh, the Dodgers want Machado back, but it's got to be at a price that makes sense for them because they still got to keep some of their guys. Yeah. Um, yep. So I mean, it's not really a bidding war yet. You know, yeah. no one's really thrown down something and said, all right, this is what it is. Yeah. Not a, a major team anyway. Like you said, they had the White Sox. Um, you know, Manny's had some other meetings with some teams that were smaller market, but nothing crazy And that's yet. the thing. If you're, if you're Bryce Harper or Manny Machado, are you going to just go to any team just because they'll give you the number that you want? Or do you want to win a championship? Because you're still going to get, you know, just, if, you, if you're taking two, how much? Of, to how much? Million, how much of a pay cut are you willing to take? I mean, I think we. Well, it's not going to be this up last It's not going to be like, oh, he wants three hundred, and the highest he's going to get is two hundred to play for a contender. It's right. not going to be like that. It'll probably be somewhere in the middle. So would you? Would you? Would Fifty you, million? What? What? Is, you know? Yeah, but uh, you know what? That, I mean, and we. When you're looking at I think we were at opposite number. sides on this last time. I, I said you, they take a big pay cut to go to a winning team, and you said you know thirty million or something like that was a big deal. But well, not when you're playing for the Yankees and you're in the New York market. Then it's a little we, different. We were reversed on the. the that's what I said back. last time, and you disagreed with me. But aside from that, we're out of time. Hmm. Thank you all for joining us. That Hot 97 interview is coming soon. Once again, shout out to Hip Hop Gamer and Hot 97 for Eric Sanchez, a.k.a. Legend in Two Games, and Trip Young. I'm Mark the Statman Skevich. Thank you all for joining us, and good night, everyone. Face facts, what up, what up? Real fans, real talk.com. Well, Arthur Diamond's Trip Young and Intern Tom. For the white and black fans, Asia to Manhattan. I get all my facts from my bro, Mark the Stats, man. If you're not tuned in, I recommend the CAT scan. Uh -huh. And if your brain checks out, then you deserve a back end. <laughs> Sports, gossip, all the hot topics. Hey, hey. Real fans, real got it. Uh, they got the hottest bloggers. Did Jeremy Lynn hurt? We'll log onto the site and you can hear it from them first. Uh, I'm talking about the latest. Yeah. I'm talking about the greatest. Yeah, yeah. Go check out the archives. Even tell a neighbor. Tell a Bobby. From spring to winter, tuning in should be the only thing on your agenda. Certified coach, son, you know what I'm about, son. Real fans, real talk.com. I'm out, but real fans, real talk, real fans, real talk, real fans, real talk.com. Real fans, real talk.com. Real fans, real talk, real fans, real talk, real fans, real talk.com. Real fans, real talk.com.